If you think back on someone who was a big influence in your life in one way or another, that someone is likely to be one of your teachers. Ken Wilshire recently spent some time with a former college professor who spent about 45 years influencing the lives of budding artists. Well, today he's busier than ever following his own artistic dreams. Yeah, in, in there. And Instead of packing his briefcase for class, retired yeah. art professor yeah. Dr. Jim Deere heads down the short path from his house to his studio most every morning in Cunningham, Tennessee. My mother, uh, when I wanted to be an art major undergraduate, she said, oh no, no, major in business. You'll never make a living <laughs> doing art. Well, he may not have listened to his mother, but what a career Jim has had. I'm proud of the, the students that I've worked with and the things that I've done, uh, both as a teacher and an administrator at Austin P. You know, I think it's a, it's a very rewarding thing to be, to be able to get up in the morning and say, gee, things are great. You know, it's a good day and I'm gonna go make some art and I'm feeling good about who I am. And once he's inside his studio, you'll see why Jim's so proud of his artistic accomplishments and the opportunities just waiting for his creative touch. Now that I'm retired, I'm, I'm, I'm now can be an artist. But as a professor, I saw myself as a professor, not an artist who did teaching, but a teacher who also did art, because the teaching was what was primary. So there are no lesson plans. Jim's day usually begins with sketching, or maybe sculpting. You can also find him at his wood-turning lathe. His works are polished for display. Of course, there are his paintings, and who knows what he'll work on next. It's all the media he passionately taught his students, but never had the time he could devote to it for himself. I like for students uh, when I was working with them to have something more to say than the obvious and so I'm trying to do that same thing with my work and uh, give you something that six months later you go I didn't see that now you know that's the kind of reaction I love. Jim also loves his spacious studio it's like a magical retreat where he can give his imagination free reign to tell stories on canvas in clay, wood, metal, or stone. Getting those materials to work together, I think, are, are what are important. And it's such a challenge because one will do one thing and one will do another, and you, you know the kind of shapes that you can work with depending on the material. So it's, it's uh, uh, I like them all. Here we have wood, ceramic, and alabaster also. And working with the multimedia, the different challenges of, of how to put them together, how to get them to stay together, and, uh, and then just working with the different materials have such different qualities. And I love that aspect of, of you know, smooth, rough, polished, not polished, and, uh, and working with that as a, as a part of the message. And they all have stories to tell in Jim's own whimsical, humorous way. A lot of artists are, are not particularly concerned about telling a story. They're just interested in the shapes and the forms and colors and so on. I love to tell a story. My wife says that sometimes they're so bizarre that nobody can get it. <laughs> but I think some of them are rather more obvious. Although I like to have humor in Sometimes the initial look and, and thought, oh, well, that's this. But I, I like to use humor and somewhat of an enigma in there. You know, like, okay, there's a mystery behind the, the, the first thing that you see. Jim truly has been an inspiration to his students. Many have even been featured on Tennessee Crossroads. It's like your own children. You're proud of their accomplishments. I love, uh, you know, to see that part and for a student to have a chance to, to use their own creativity and say, this is who I am, is essential in the educational process. And while he may not have taken his mother's advice about his education, it's been the support of his family that's led to success. The fact that I've had a wonderful family, a great wife of 45 years, to uh, help me through all of this and support me, 
and parents that believed in me. Still, Jim faced some formidable challenges early in his life, but he never ever gave up. In the seventh grade, I was tested to see if I had uh, mental problems because I'm extremely dyslexic. Nobody knew that at the time. I, I could barely read in the seventh grade. So for me to have four college degrees is just unheard of. He's illustrated books, has sculptures here, there, and yonder. His paintings and mixed media works decorate walls and tabletops across the country. But his most precious works are... My children. <laughs> um, I think it, it, it's, it's an ongoing process. I will have pride in one piece until I get to the next one that I like more. Just like he clearly remembers his high school art teacher, Mrs. Frazier, who encouraged him. Jim hopes he's inspired his former college students to brighten the world with their own stories and expressions of themselves in art. It's all about the work and never giving up, no matter you know, when somebody says, oh well, you know, that's not very good. What do they know? <laughs> You're always gonna have your critics, so just never give up.